you really a doctor? Afraid so. Well, I'm sure you're a lovely girl, but why don't you trot along and find me a proper doctor? A bloke. I can see a lady doctor, can't I? I don't want to see a man. No problem, we've got a woman doctor here. And are you sexually active? I haven't done it yet. If that's what you mean. Mum, let go! Where is the doctor that saw my daughter? Is there a problem? Where is she? I saw Libby. How can I help? Well, you can start by telling me why you gave a prescription for the pill to a 13-year-old girl. is a minor. She claimed to be 15. I had no reason to doubt her. Well, you should check your facts before you start dishing out contraceptives left, right and centre. Even if I'd known Libby's age, I would still have made the same decision. Without my consent? Not all mothers are as involved as you appear to be. Some just don't want to know. But she's just a child. She's obviously old enough. Of course, I counselled her in all the risks, but she came to me specifically to request the pill. My daughter doesn't sleep around. I prescribed on the basis that she was planning a sexual relationship. I'm sure you'd agree that some form of contraception is preferable to an unwanted pregnancy. Well, I think you should have consulted me. I know what is best for my daughter. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you have acted with negligence. You have encouraged my daughter to be sexually active. I mean, she doesn't even talk about boys. Did it occur to you that she might be scared to broach the subject with you? Libby! <laughs> scared of me? Well, why don't I bring her in so... Look, I think you've done quite enough, thank you very much. Well, I just think... Just mind your own business, all right? And don't you kid yourself that I'm letting this matter rest here, either. Oh, hello, Libby. What brings you here? Nothing. You're not sick, I hope. No. How's your mum? And Gary? They're OK. Oh, I haven't seen them lately. Come on. Oh, hi, Sue. I am just saying to Libby, I haven't seen you for a while. Oh. Hi, Marge. What brings you here? Nothing serious, I hope. Nothing I can't sort out. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Now, tell me, what do I have to do to make an official complaint? Against the clinic? One of your doctors. Trying to make an impression, huh? Me? Never. Mind you, if I was after her, once she tasted my pikelets, she'd be mine forever. Oh, yeah? What do you put in them? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, smells good. What did I tell you, man? Uh, coffee? Mm, please. Hey. And may I recommend the ship special? <laughs> He's enough to feed an army. Think nothing of it. Thanks, Steve. And thanks for not being disapproving in everything. Oh, that's okay. What do you mean? Well. The way that you two were carrying on when I first started seeing Chris. I mean, you were like two overprotective big brothers or something. Well, like we said, we were just worried about you, that's all. Yeah, but now we realise you're more than able to look after yourself. Well, that's right. You don't need us riding shotgun. I appreciate <laughs> it. Hey. Morning, all. Well, that smells good. Oh, special offering from Steve. Oh, beauty. I'm starving. I didn't have time for dinner last night. Just, uh, help yourself, Chris. Coffee? Thanks. Mmm! Mm, good pot life. <laughs> feeling any better? I'm OK. Should you be back at work? I mean, if you're not feeling up to it, I can always get someone to cover for no, you. No, really, thanks. I'm over it now. Please yourself. I'd like to keep busy, honestly. And I'm not contagious anymore, so I won't be putting patients at any risk. Oh, Jackie, uh, Dr. McKenna wants to see you when you've got a moment. Oh, just some routine matter, I expect. Uh, maybe I'd better go and see him before it gets too busy. Uh, hey, cut it out. Oh, you're so gorgeous. Well, what if someone comes in? So what? Didn't worry you before. Hey, surely you're not bothered about your reputation. It's yours I'm worried about. I lost mine when I started seeing you. 
<laughs> Not just my reputation either. Yeah, well, this is hardly the time or the place, is it? Well, save it for later, when we can give it our full concentration. Sure. So we keep business and pleasure strictly separate, right? Yeah. You got it. Excuse me. Things to do. Yeah. Needle stick injuries are an occupational hazard, I guess. Chances are you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. We'll hold that thought, eh? Thank you. But we do need to take every precaution. Oh, I always do. It was just this one time yes, I... Yes, I know, but uh, I do need to consider the patients, Jackie. Uh, there's no reason why I should be a danger to the patients. It's more of a political question than a practical one. If you should unwittingly infect someone, it would be very messy legally for the clinic. I won't. And then there's your own psychological health to consider. You're already under considerable stress, and that'll get worse as time goes by. And stress in itself could be a contributing factor to the development of the virus. We need to protect you from that. Dr. McKenna, All I'm... in all, I think it would be best if you took some time off. At least until we're 100% sure that you're in the clear. I, I don't need time off. Jackie, I am thinking of your welfare. And I think that it would be very wise of you to give the matter some serious consideration. Oh, morning, Dr. Fleming. Dr. McKenna asked if you can go and see him before you sign on for duty. Yes, of course. Is that about Sue Hammond making a complaint? I couldn't say, Marge. Oh, she was terribly upset. I've never seen her in such a state. Yes, I heard about it. Oh, I wouldn't like to be in Meredith's shoes. Hope she's got a good explanation for Dr. McKenna. Well, it's not something you need concern yourself with, Marge. Just do your job and keep your head down. I can't help seeing what's under my very nose, can I? Didn't I ask you to pick up some things from the pharmacist? As soon as Kirsty comes back, I can go. Can I help you? Sir Bruce Warner to see Dr McKenna. Oh, have you got an appointment? I don't need a damned appointment. McKenna will see me, all right? Which way's his office? Oh, up the stairs at the end of the corridor. Oh, you can take the lift if you like. I think he's busy just now. Thank you. Dad. What are you doing here? Business with your boss. Your mother's complaining that she doesn't see you these days. Do something about it, will you? Sure. A big family dinner is just what I feel like. Yes, it's always a bit iffy prescribing contraceptives for young girls. I admit I did wonder if Libby was telling the truth. But it makes no difference. There's nothing in law that says I can't prescribe for her. I thought it was the wisest course to take. Law or no law, you know, there's still a moral issue. Whether or not we think a girl that age should be sexually active is beside the point. She shouldn't be having unprotected sex. If the alternative to prescribing her the pill is pregnancy, then I don't see that I have any choice. It's okay, okay. Your point is taken. I don't necessarily feel good about it, but I stick by my decision regardless of whether the mother approves or not. Good morning. Bruce Warner to see McKenna. I'm afraid he has someone with him right now. Will you wait? Well, I suppose I'll have to. Yes, well, hopefully Mrs. Hammond will reconsider her threat once she's calmed down. But please, just try to be a little more careful in the future. In what? Prescribing for teenagers? No, in avoiding complaints. I see. That's the important issue here, isn't it? Well, yes. Sir Bruce, what an unexpected pleasure. Well, uh, the clinic's doing well, McKenna. Your phone bill must be cutting into your profits. Sorry? All the calls we've been making, trying to rally support for this craniofacial unit of yours? Oh, simply making the board aware of the unit's potential. Yeah, politicking, I call it. But it won't do you a bit of good. I call the shots as far as the board is concerned. I wouldn't have joined it otherwise. Is that so? I told you, you want the grant? It's yours. As soon as you sack my son from this hole in the wall you laughingly call a clinic. Yes, well, I don't think I can do that, Sir Bruce. Chris is quite an asset. I'll just have to take my chances, and you never know. There may be one or two board members who'll vote against you. Huh. I rather doubt that. 
That's your final decision? Absolutely. All right. Your funeral. Yes, I'd like to speak to someone who can read the latest union guidelines on staff who've been exposed to the HIV virus. Uh, no, just a routine inquiry. We're reviewing insurance arrangements. That's right. I send them to Dr. McKenna's secretary. Good day, Verna. Hope you're having a better day than I am. Oh, that woman can be such a dragon. Carrie Burton. She been on your back again. Yeah, me and everyone else. She said you've got an order for her? Oh, yes, here it is. A bit of stock the clinic's running short of. I said we'd help out till their deliveries come in. Oh, thanks. I had that young nurse of yours in here earlier, the blonde one. Uh, Alison? Could be. I don't know her name. Strange girl. Very nervous. Twitchy. Oh, it doesn't sound like Alison. <sighs> Might have had to do with the things she was buying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know what I was meant to tell you. That girl you used to have working here, the Maori girl, what was her name? Oh, Jackie Manu. That's her, yes. Oh, she still works there. Does she? Not for much longer, I bet. Oh, why? I had to go round to the warehouse the other day, you know, just round the corner from the AIDS clinic. Guess who I saw coming out? AIDS? Hi, gorgeous. I thought we agreed to keep it formal at work. Sorry, I forgot. Hi, Dr. Gorgeous. <laughs> You're impossible. <laughs> what are we doing tonight? Well, tonight? I wasn't aware we were doing anything tonight. Well, we've both got to eat, so we might as well do it together. We went out last night. I see. Getting sick of me already, are you? Oh, no, of course not. Um, OK, how about the Vietnamese place? Fine, great. Uh, put me up after work? Uh, I'm going to the gym for a workout. Oh, OK. I'll meet you in the coffee shop when you're finished. And don't tire yourself out too much. Well, Dr Fleming. Yes, Marge? I only want to say that just because um, Sue Hammond is a friend of mine, I am not going to take sides. That's very fair of you. I don't think she'll cause any trouble. She's just very upset. She's had a hard time, you know, what with the marriage breakup and everything. Oh, she's divorced. Oh, yes, years ago. But she's living with a lovely guy now. Gary. Yeah, Tom and I play mahjong with him now and again. That probably explains why Libby so desperately wants to please a boyfriend. If she's been emotionally insecure in the past, she may see it as the only way to hold on to him. Mm, not sure about boyfriends. She's very, uh, oh, you know, young for her age. Oh, still on your break, Marge. I just called in to have a word with Dr Fleming. I'm on my way. I've left a list of things for Jackie to do when she gets out of theatre. I'll make sure she gets it. Good. You look whacked, if I may say so. You may, and I am. Sorry to hear about that business with Mrs Hammond. Hope everything's OK. Oh, Marge doesn't think there'll be any more problems. I hope not. Not until the poor girl gets herself into trouble, anyway. Mm. You know what really bugs me? is that McKenna couldn't care less about the ethical side of it. All he's worried about is avoiding trouble. No, you're wrong. He really does care. But it's his job to put the good of the clinic first. Excuse me if I beg to differ. Thanks, Madge. Are you sure you can cope with all this? Of course, why shouldn't I? Well, you have been sick. Just a touch of the flu. Um, oh, there's a note from Dr. Warner about Mrs. Pincus. Oh, oh yes. Um, stay with her when she has a medication. Apparently, she's likely to hide her pills and flush them down the toilet. Doesn't hold with drugs, evidently. Oh, I know how she feels. Oh, you poor thing. I was joking, Madge. Of course. Is there somewhere around here I can buy a newspaper? Oh, no, no, we don't have them here, but you can buy one over the road at the coffee shop. Yeah, Where's Chris? Oh, Dr. Warner's waiting for you in number three. Thanks. No, don't! I only wanted a mouthful. But you mustn't. It's Jackie's. So? Hi, Jenny. Chris, what can I do for you? Satisfy my curiosity. What about? Well, I saw my father here before. Any idea what he was here for? To see Michael. Why? 
I mean, they're not exactly old drinking buddies. You'll have to ask Michael that, I'm afraid. Mm, ever the dutiful secretary, eh? <laughs> He's in if you want to see him. Come in. Hello, Chris, what's up? Tell me it's none of my concern if you want, but uh, my father said he had some business with you. That's right. He can be an old buzzard when he wants to be. Yeah, so I've noticed. He speaks highly of you, too. <laughs> I bet. Uh, was it about the grant? In a way. You know, I've always thought of the Warners as being a very close-knit family. Well, um, every family's got its black sheep. You. According to my father, simply because I want to follow my own path through life rather than having it mapped out for me. Ah, well, that would certainly explain his offer, then. What offer? To have the board approve the grant on the condition that I give you the sack. What? I take it he's got some plans for you, has he? Yeah, which I'm not interested in. I never thought he'd go that far. Yes, well, don't worry. I didn't take him up on it. I said I'd rather take my chances with the board than lose your services. Thanks. I've never been one of your father's sycophants, and I've no intention of starting now. Whether or not we get the craniofacial unit up and running is in the lap of the gods. But apart from all that, you're a good doctor, and I want to keep you here. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, I think. Jackie, how did the meeting with Dr. McKenna go? He suggested that I disappear for a while. What? Prolonged leave of absence. He told you that? Uh, suggested it. Left the decision up to me. I mean, he's scared that having a member of his staff possibly carrying the virus might damage the reputation of his clinic. I've already warned him I wouldn't stand anyone discriminating against you. I didn't say yes or no. But I'm beginning to wonder whether it might be a good idea if I take a few months off. I mean, there's pressure enough in the job, and I don't think I can take any extra hassles. There won't be any hassles. Leave it with me. I'll have it out with him. No, forget it, please. At least until I've decided what I want to do. Well, of course, enough trouble. Well, that's me for the day. Oh, I'm glad to see someone's happy with life. You've either got what it takes or you haven't, and I have definitely got it. Mm, modest, too. You know, old McKenna's not a bad bloke. At least he sticks up for his staff, which is more than you can say for some in his position. Did I say something wrong? I won't face it with him yet, OK? But believe me, I will if he continues to pressure you. So keep me informed. Come in. Can I see about something? Professionally. Sure. What is it? <clears throat> I, um... want a prescription for the pill. Right. Have you had prior sexual experience? Why? Because if you have, you'll need a pap smear. Oh, yes, I have. Last night. Right. Well, I don't need to tell you about STDs and AIDS and the rest, do I? No. This is Chris we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I thought if I was going to start seeing him regularly, it would be best if I was on the pill. And you think that's what he wants, so long-term relationship? Stop it! <sighs> Look, I'm sick of people trying to turn me against him. I'm not. I just think you should have your eyes open. Well, they are. Look, I might not be experienced, but I am not stupid. I know that. Good. So can I have my prescription, please? I'll need to examine you and get a full medical history. We'll start with your blood pressure first. Well, hi, Stud. Long time no see. I, uh, I thought I'd give your husband time to forget what I look like. Ex-husband. What? Brad and I are history. Hi. 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 I was having an affair. Well, so what? You had a few indiscretions yourself. I was one of them, remember? Yeah, well, he's run off with a bodybuilder. She's got bigger biceps than he has. <laughs> anyway, I've called it quits with him. I just thought you might be interested to know. So if everything's fine with Chris, how come he's so late? He 
It's only a tiny bit late. So what? He probably got held up. He had to go straight to his workout after the clinic. Well, you should go in there and hurry him up. It's bad form to keep a lady waiting. No way. I'm not going to go in there and drag him out like some nagging wife. He'll be here. You want me to go in? Well, you could go in and give him a little reminder. He probably got too interested in one of those machines and forgot or something. Leave it to me! Steve, hi. Mind if I join you? Oh, help yourself. I'm just about to leave anyway. I'm expecting someone. Chris? Yeah. No, I want to say I'm sorry about being snappy before. It was kind of difficult for me. That's OK. I had no right to lecture you on your relationships. Let's just say it's been a bad day. Oh, yeah, I heard about the girl that came in. Did you get in trouble? Oh, not really. I grew up in a protected environment. Mm -hmm. I'm a dad. They never told me about any of that sort of thing. I think it's wrong leaving a girl to find out about it on her own. Well, I know I was right, and you know I was right. Let's just hope the girl's mother comes to the same conclusion. Yeah. Mm. Steve, did you find him? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Is it you or is it me? Lately I've been lost with sins. I think the change is what I need. If I'm looking for a chance of the dream, shine and street. Taking down the whole my place. Yesterday's another place. Just living for the times we've seen. As I leave, shine and stream. If you want to find a way of searching for another world, it's hard to see. Shine and stream. This program was made with the help of your broadcasting fee, so you can see more of New Zealand on air.